Welcome to video 10. This is just going to be another tangent video. We won't be adding anything to our glass sponge script. We're just going to dig in a little bit into the concept of data trees because these are really important in Grasshopper. So if you feel like you're comfortable already with using lists and trees in Grasshopper, just go ahead and skip this video. But if you don't know what trees are or branches or how they relate to lists, if these words make no sense, then hopefully watching this video can help clear things up. And there's no need to make what I make in this video. You can if you want. It might help you learn some new components. But the point of this video is to just see data trees in action so that we can use them explicitly in video 11. So what are branches and what are trees? These are very important concepts in Grasshopper. And they have to do with lists of things. So a branch is just a list. One branch is one list. And you can have a list of numbers, or a list of points, or a list of surfaces, just about anything you can make a list of, of them, and hold them in one branch. And a tree, which is short for data tree, a tree is just a collection of branches, which is the same thing as saying it's a collection of lists. And the great thing about trees is they make it very easy for us to organize a lot of information. We can organize a lot of points, or a lot of circles, or a lot of integers, numbers, whatever. So we'll quickly go over all of that. And this is something, again, that will seem kind of confusing at first, but as you use Grasshopper more and more, it's going to become second nature in no time. This is just the way that we organize things in Grasshopper. So I'm going to quickly do a demonstration that goes over the concept of branches in Grasshopper. And to do this, I'm just going to open up a new Grasshopper canvas. And I'm going to start with a point, so I'm going to type construct point. And if I hover over this, we can see that we just have one thing in this component, just one point. And now let's array this point. I'm going to type in array. And we're going to use array linear for this. And let's plug the point in there. And then if I hover over this output, the geometry output here, you can see that now I have 10 points. The default direction here is 10, 0, 0. So that's a vector in the x direction. 10 is x and 0 in the y and 0 in the z direction. So that's where the first point in this array goes, to 10, 0, 0. And then the last point is actually at x equals 90. The default number to array is 10. And since the first point is at 0 and we go up by 10 each time, the last point is at x equals 90. So again, the number of items, the default is 10 also. I'm going to hide our original points. And let's do this again. Actually, first, I'll note that this is a list of 10 points. So there are 10 points in this component, and they're organized as a list. But if I right-click here and I go to Graft, it says Graft all data in this parameter. So what that means is now each point that was in this list is its own tree branch. So now when I hover over this output, you can see it says 0, 0, 0, and then n equals 1, then 0, 0, 1, n equals 1. And these numbers that are between the curly brackets, these are the paths to the branches. These represent one branch each. And the n is telling us how many items are in each of those lists. Remember, branches are lists. And so there's just one item in each list, and we have 10 different lists. So I'm going to right-click again and say Simplify. And all that did was simplify the paths. So if I do it again and I go to Simplify, you can see that between these curly brackets, the first two numbers are always 0, 0, all the way down. And we don't need those since it's the same in every branch. They're not giving us any information, really or at all. So if I say simplify, it's going to get rid of all of those extra integers. And so now we have 10 different branches and they're labeled 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9. And those are the integers between the curly brackets. And each branch has one item in it, one point in our case. And so I'm going to copy this component. And let's do this again. But this time, instead of starting with a vector in the x direction, let's array them in the y direction. So I'm going to get, I'm going to type y for unit y, and then I'm just going to get a panel with 10 in it. 
and let's put that into the direction. So now we have 100 points. If I hover over this, it says 100 locally defined values. And let's get a panel so we can see this a little more clearly. Now we do need more than one integer between these curly brackets. We need two because we have a path that's describing how many columns or which column we're on in this direction. And then we have a path that's describing which row we're on in this direction. And so you can see it goes from zero, semicolon zero, all the way to nine, semicolon nine. And again, there's only one point in each of those lists. So we can scroll down here and you can see this one says three, eight. That means we're going from zero to one, two, three, up to one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that, that's referring to this point right here, three, eight. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to make this tree a little more complicated yet. And the reason I'm making it kind of complicated, you don't have to follow along here or anything, but, but hopefully by seeing a complicated tree when we go back to the tree that we're going to be working with, maybe that will seem a little bit easier. Maybe that will seem a little bit easier than it would have if we hadn't looked at this complicated tree. So I'll delete this and next let's make a rectangle out of each one of these points. And I'm just going to get a vector XYZ component. Again, you don't have to follow along here. And of course, skip ahead if you think you've got the hang of this tree stuff. But I'm just going to go one level deeper on with these trees. So I'm going to get I'm going to duplicate this vector XYZ component and I'm going to move each one of these points in two different directions. So I'm going to get a number slider between 0 0.100 and 3 or let's say 4. I don't know how big it needs to be. And then I'm going to get a negative component. This will just take whatever comes into X and make it negative. So let's move all of these points a little bit in the X and a little bit in the Y and a little bit in the negative X and a little bit in the negative Y. Then I'm going to get a rectangle component, a rectangle two point. So this takes in two points and it's going to make a rectangle out of it. And we're going to take all of our 100 points here and move them according to these two vectors. So let's get a move component. And let's plug this in and I'm going to hold shift and plug this vector in also. And let's increase these values a little bit. So now you can see we're moving them diagonally from each other in opposite directions. And let's get a dispatch component. And this is just going to separate. Right now we have, we still have 100 different lists, but those 100 different lists have two points in them each. This is going to separate those out to A and B. And we'll use those points as our A and B points for these rectangles. And then I'm going to hide all of this. So now we have 100 different rectangles instead of 100 different points. And let's make these rectangles a little bit bigger. And let's divide these rectangles into eight different pieces. So I'm going to get a divide curve component because right now these are just curves. And I'm going to get a panel that says eight. Now we can see that we have 800 points. So for each one of our 100 squares, we just made eight different points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 100 is 800. So we have 800 different points. And I'm gonna simplify this first. And let's hover over this to see what our output looks like again. We, we have the same data structure, the same tree structure, 0, semicolon 0, then 0, semicolon 1, all the way up to 9, semicolon 9. So there are still 100 branches in this tree, but now each branch, instead of having one point or one rectangle, now it has eight points. So each of our 100 lists has eight points in it. And let's graph this again. So now we have 800 branches, each with one point in it again. But there are three different numbers describing each of our paths, each of our branches. So it's easier to navigate than just a list of 800 different points. And I'll demonstrate that in just a, a minute here. 
But the reason I did this is so that we can just do this step again. So I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to select that, then hold Shift to select this. Then tap Alt and bring this down here. And let's plug this into here. And let's hide all of this. And we actually don't need this last step here. Let's show this. And let's make these a little bit smaller. So now we have eight rectangles. We can say that these are like street blocks and these are like maybe the footprints of buildings, just a very simplified version of a city maybe. And let's say we want to give them some height. So I'm just going to give them random heights. I'm going to get a random component. And this takes in a range. That's what the R stands for. So I'm going to type in construct domain. And let's get a range between like 4.000 and 30. And I'll duplicate this. We'll put this up to like 24, something like that. And so what construct what the construct domain component puts out is it's actually a string of text. Uh, um, it's just a text that says an integer, then two or that says a number and then two and then another number and so that's a range and so these random numbers are going to be somewhere between 9.972 and 28.973 that goes into our range component and then how many random values do we want let's get a component called tree statistics and plug our tree in here and this little c at the bottom is count so how many total branches are in this tree there are 800 that's how many different heights we want. This random component is going to give us our heights, our building heights, and we need 800 of them. And then since we have 800 different branches here for our 800 different buildings, we need all 800 of these items to be in their own separate branch also. All of these numbers, all of these heights. So I'm gonna graft the, these also and just simplify it for the heck of it. Now we have 800 different branches here, and although these trees don't match exactly, we do have 800 branches in each. And so I can use these numbers to move these rectangles, even though the tree paths don't match exactly. It's a little cleaner if you want to go through it and make them match exactly, or in, in a lot of cases you will want them to match more closely, but but that's a little beyond this short tangent video. So I'm just going to use these random numbers as vectors. So I'm going to say unit Z. I just typed Z and got a Z vector. So now we have 800 different Z vectors. I'm going to say move. I'm going to move our rectangles according to these Z vectors. And then I'm going to merge the rectangles on the bottom with the rectangles on the top. So put those in our first input and these in our second input. So now we have the same structure tree that we had before in both of these different cases. So again, coming out of here, we have 800 different branches that use three integers each to de describe the paths of those branches. So 000, 000 all the way to 997. And this is the same, except in these cases, for this component and this component, each list is only one item long, but here, each list is two items long. And so if we get a loft component, and plug this in, now each list is just one item long, just one brep. So this just basically made a surface between our bottom rectangles and our top rectangles. So I can hide all of this. So now we have some very crude, tall buildings. And let's make them appear a little bit differently so that we can see what's going on a little bit better. I'm gonna type in custom preview. And this is a way to change what's coming out of the Rhino viewport, how the objects look. And it asks for a geometry and a material. Let's create a material. So I'm gonna type create material. And the important inputs here are the T in the, in the diffuse input. KD up here, 
And so the T is for transparency. So I'm going to get a slider between 0, 0.000 and 1. And if you hover over, it says amount of transparency between 0.0, .0 which is opaque, and 1.0, which is completely transparent. And so if we have it at 0, then all of these, everything's going to be completely opaque. But the further we bring it towards 1, the more see through it will be. And then let's get a color swatch. And I'm going to get just a light gray for these. And that's going to go to our diffuse. And we'll plug that into the materials and we'll hide this. Let's make these a little more transparent. So now we have all of our buildings. And let's say we want to single out one building in particular. We have 800 of them, so it would be pretty difficult to or kind of a pain if these were all in a list to just scroll through a number slider that has 800 numbers in it to find the exact one that we want. But in our case, we can get to any building. Because these are organized in trees, it's much easier to get to whichever building we want to get to. So let's get a tree branch component. And you can see that this takes in a tree and a path. So I'm going to put our lofted objects in as the tree input and then the path is if i hover over these lofted objects again you can see our paths zero semicolon zero semicolon zero all the way up to nine semicolon nine semicolon seven that's what the path is asking for because it's gonna, going to just grab one branch out of this tree and so i'm going to get three different number sliders one that goes from actually two that go from zero to nine because the first two integers in our paths, remember each of our paths here uses three integers to differentiate itself from the others. The first two integers in these paths each go from 0 to 9. The first integer in our case is indicating which column we're in, and the second integer is referring to the row. So we have one from 0 to 9, another from 0 to 9, and then the third one is just going to go from 0 to 7. And then let's merge these inputs into one component and make sure that they're in the right order. And then let's get a construct path component. And it's this little branch with leaves coming off of it. And if we put these three inputs into this construct path component, and I get a panel to see what's coming out, this is a path to 0, 0, 0. And then if we change this, you can see that now it's 020, 026, 926, and so this is just giving us a path, and we can put that into our path output. So let's copy all of these again, these components here, and we'll put our single item, let's make it maybe blue and opaque. I'll hide this. So now if we want to go, say, to our third column, Let's go to the top view. Let me get rid of this grid. Let's go to our third column here. 0, 1, 2 is our third one. And then our, our fifth row up, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we can just pick any of these on this block. So that's this one is building 0, 1, 2, and all the way to 8 or seven, sorry. And so hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea. Trees are extremely, extremely useful. This is a very simple, this is a pretty straightforward example, but they come up all the time. And again, you'll, you'll get really used to it. It's, it's a little confusing at first, and the way that we'll be using it is easier than this. So let's get back to the glass sponge and start organizing our points to make some squares.